And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather and Happy New Year. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service on this first day of 2024. We have a lot going on across the state of Alaska, but in the meantime, if you'd like additional weather information on top of what you get in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left and tabs here for the other uh, territories. And if you point and click anywhere on this map, it'll provide a specific forecast for a given location with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories. And looking at the lower 48 on this New Year's Day, relatively quiet weather, especially across uh, the nation's east and midsection. In through the west, though, we do have a few uh, dense fog advisories, air quality alerts, and then one winter weather advisory for the Sierra Nevada, but no major storms impacting the lower 48 at this time. But a very active weather pattern is going to unfold here in the early new year across a good portion of Alaska, especially the north, the west, southwest areas. There's going to be dangerous blizzard conditions and very low wind chills as cold as 50 below zero along the Arctic coast for a prolonged period. Now spreading eastward overnight through at least Thursday into Friday in some locations. Also, windy conditions with blowing snow and low wind chills will occur along the west coast and uh, large areas of the interior. All of this being driven by a very strong pressure gradient. Uh, we have a very deep low down. It's going to bottom out right around 936, 935 millibars lifting out of the North Pacific and then up through the uh, eastern Aleutians late Tuesday into early Wednesday. Meanwhile, up in the Arctic Ocean, there's a 1046 millibar high. And when you get that kind of big pressure difference between two big systems like that, uh, that means a lot of wind. And that'll translate to very brisk easterly winds across areas of the Arctic coast, the interior, and down along areas of the southwest coast. I want to quick uh, kind of recap a very important stat here. I got our three major cities in the state uh, with snowfall totals from July 1st through December 31st. And this is just, you know, the snow season snowfall total thus far. So far in 2023, the most snow ever recorded since records being kept since 1953 for Anchorage, almost 80 inches of snow, 79.5 inches. That's like two feet above what Anchorage had last year when there was that series of three potent storms in December that made a big dump of snow. So this has been a really incredible year, followed by 1994 when it was 76.9 inches. So we've had previous years, even 1955, up until uh, the end of December, where we've had over 70 inches of snow, the other uh, being going far back to 1955. Now looking at Fairbanks, the data there, normally by December 31st, Fairbanks should have about 34 inches of snow on average. That's just climatologically based on the last 30 years. This year, they're running 10 inches ahead of that, just about, I should say, nine inches. And then the record season being 1970, the, uh, Fairbanks had received over 112 inches of snow through the end of uh, December. And then as we go down into uh, the southeast at Juneau, so far this year, 19.7 inches of snow compared to the 30-year average through December 31st of 32.2 inches. So below normal snowfall there at Juneau in the Panhandle and many areas of the Panhandle have had below normal snowfall simply because of the milder temperatures associated with this current El Nino pattern. The record in Juneau, though, was... Uh, 105.6 inches back, way back in 1917. So things are playing out relatively what we'd expect for an El Nino pattern. Warmer temperatures over the southeast means more rain. Milder temperature over, over south central southwest means above normal snowfall. You got the colder air still in through the interior with moisture working north. So Fairbanks is also seeing above normal uh, snowfall so far this winter season. So Earlier this Monday afternoon on uh, the first day of January, we have Point Lay reporting blizzard conditions 15 below. And I just noticed I forgot to update that year. It's going to happen. Everybody does it when the new year comes. Shugneck there, uh, east of Kotzebue Sound, building east winds, temperature at 12 above. There are going to be some very strong winds through that region develop Tuesday and continue through Wednesday into Thursday. And same thing here. For Hooper Bay, blowing snow, uh, temperature at 20 degrees. There's a batch of snow uh, that's working its way along the outer 
uh, portion of the Yukon Delta, and that'll be the case here and through this evening where winter weather advisories are in effect. And then way out toward the eastern Aleutians, uh, Akon Island there east of uh, Dutch Harbor, partly cloudy 35, but windier conditions are going to be setting up as that deep low lifts out of the North Pacific. Looking at what we have for current hazardous weather along the Arctic coast, blizzard mornings. That's now through Friday morning. Prolonged wind event will cause considerable blowing, drifting snow, and at times wind chills as cold as 40, 50 below. Then we have, with the winds increasing across the interior, winter storm warning for considerable blowing snow uh, in the area northwest of Fairbanks as you go up uh, the lower Dalton Highway, also north and northeast of Fairbanks, winter weather advisories for blowing snow. Very strong winds here between uh, the Brooks Range and Alaska Range will set up across the Yukon Valley and then come up along the west coast. These areas that are yellow are still in a winter storm watch for blowing snow and strong winds that are likely develop Tuesday and, and continue into Wednesday and Thursday. Those will likely be upgraded probably in the forecast package that will be issued overnight early on Tuesday morning. Then we have winter weather advisories here, lower Yukon Delta, Nunavik Island, Etolan Strait, up to St. Lawrence for a batch of snow now that continues to work its way uh, west, northwestward, and just brushing the outer southwest coast. This area here around Bristol Bay, that is a high wind watch for later Tuesday into Wednesday morning because a very deep low is going to come up out of the North Pacific. It's slowed down. I've been talking about this now for a long time. That low is slowed down, so it's not going to come in as fast as it was looking by maybe off by a day. So as a result, uh, it's, it's going to allow for these conditions to hold off a little longer. But the central Aleutians, including ADAC, will see heavy snow and very strong winds with near blizzard conditions possible, especially as that wave of precipitation lifts northward later tonight, and especially during the day on Tuesday into early Wednesday. So a lot going on across the state. Here's another neat image from forecast office up in Fairbanks showing here's the Arctic coast, Utkiadvik, Wayne right down to uh, Point Lay. Satellite imagery shows cracks in the ice developing along the Beaufort and Chukchi Seas. And this is only going to increase because the winds are just starting to get going. Right now, the, Ar the blizzard conditions are here in the area around Point Lay, and they will back build eastward tonight and into Tuesday, and then eventually work their way over toward Kaktovik. The big question remains how much snow is on the ground here to allow for ground blizzard to really get going. One reason the ground blizzard conditions are worse here on this northwestern slope is because we have the snow being blown off of the mainland that's accumulated here along that area of the north slope. But again, these ice cracks opening up, very dangerous conditions with the ice shifting with the strong winds and also the bitter cold and reduced visibilities with dangerous windshield, uh, it makes travel impossible and extremely dangerous. So exercise caution. It's going to be a prolonged event for at least the next three, four days. And looking here at the satellite imagery, we have one low here that's going to gradually weaken. And the main low that we're watching is down here. It's just starting to show up in the North Pacific. And then we have a big high just up here, at the top of the screen out over the Arctic Ocean. And as we go through uh, the map, starting with this afternoon, here's a low that sits down there right now. That's not the main one we're concerned about. And the big high is way up here, Arctic Ocean. There's the low coming up out of the North Pacific by late tonight, early on Tuesday morning, we'll have a 940 low that's going to further deepen as it lifts slowly northward. The other low begins to fill and weaken with a trough out across the lower gulf. And then this is the little trough that's responsible for the snow that's falling this New Year's Day along the lower Yukon Do Delta, Etolan Strait, uh, Nunavik Island, up to St. Uh, uh, Lawrence Island. That will continue drifting its way northwestward. So by Tuesday afternoon, we have a low down around 935 millibars here just south of the uh, eastern Aleutians with a occluded front wrapped around it. And it's along this front as it works northeastward slowly. We'll see some very strong winds here across the Alaska Peninsula and up along the Bristol Bay coast and up in the lower uh, arm here of the Alaska range. A lot of wind shear, a lot of strong gusty winds by Wednesday afternoon. That low just slowly lifts up across the eastern Aleutians near Dutch Harbor. 
and just be up in the lower Bering Sea, west southwest of Bristol Bay. The front around it will begin to weaken, but the front will continue working its way eastward into the Gulf, pushing precipitation and gusty winds along the Gulf Coast in through the Panhandle. Meanwhile, in the interior, see this these tight pressure gradient? Because the high that was up in the Arctic Ocean is going to slip southeastward, build southeastward into northwest, north-central Canada. That makes for very strong um, winds across areas of the interior through some of the gaps. If the winds are a little more south southeasterly, then it pours through sections of the Alaska range. So as that load does take that position, I think some of the gaps, you'll see additional high wind warnings and wind advisories coming up here for the interior through the midweek period. But on Tuesday morning, we expect Lowe's outer panhandle coastline to be above freezing, mid-upper 30s, below freezing, Juno on up toward Haines, Skagway, 23 below, easily in the Copper River Basin where the cold air pools. Temperatures Tuesday afternoon should at least get back up into the 20s, much warmer than it was. We had temperatures uh, early in the weekend that were close to 30 below at Talkeetna, 35, 36 below there at uh, Gulcana, so it's definitely an improvement. Then along areas of the outer Panhandle coastline, you got Ketchikan on up toward uh, Sitka, 44 degrees or so. Uh, we see temperatures Middleton Island down toward Kodiak around or just above 40. And then on Wednesday morning, still some sub-zero readings within the Copper River Basin, but uh, as we go out here through the Panhandle, generally readings 30 or a bit higher, coldest readings up there in the north corner there of the Panhandle. And then temperatures should moderate. Uh, as that front gradually tries to push a little further north, we could get temperatures back up to around freezing Anchorage Bowl by Wednesday afternoon, and certainly areas further south and west could be up around or just above 40, Homer down to to Kodiak City. Now the interior, we have plenty of cold air, sub-zero readings this uh, come Tuesday morning for lows. Some areas could be uh, near 30 below, uh, say Arctic Village down toward Northway. But along the west coast, temperatures actually bump up a bit. You're getting downslope flow with those strong east winds. The east winds keeps the air mixed. So we expect lows in the teens. And then temperatures Tuesday afternoon, Sub-zero along the Elkan border areas of the Brooks Range uh, along the eastern Arctic coast, but some 20s, lower 20s possible around Norton Sound, west side of the Seward Peninsula. And again, Wednesday morning, coldest temperatures will be in the eastern part of the state along the Elkan border. Readings could still be down around 25 below or so. Single digits above zero along the western coast and teens as you get around Norton Sound. And then temperatures Wednesday afternoon, still below zero in through the northeast, Yukon Flats down toward Northway. But as you go east, again, we expect teens to a few lower 20s, especially Nome down, say, to um, Imanuk. And then going along the southwest areas, Tuesday morning, still sub-zero around uh, McGrath, northward up the Yukon Valley. And then as we look at the uh, Alaska Peninsula and along the Aleutians, temperatures above freezing. Tuesday afternoon highs, we could see some lower 40s along the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 at Dutch Harbor. And then Wednesday morning, we expect temperatures to, in a few areas, be down near the freezing mark, uh, moderating along the southwest coast into the 20s. And then uh, afternoon highs by Wednesday afternoon will be uh, a bit above freezing up to Bethel. Certainly well above freezing, or I should say at least mid-upper 30s, near 40 here as you go King Salmon down along the Alaska Peninsula, all, all the way down again toward Dutch Harbor. And here's what we've been kind of seeing this pattern. Now keep in mind it's January, the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, January 7th through the 11th. Above normal temperatures across much of the mainland centered on the lower middle Yukon Valley, the west side of the state. Meanwhile, temperatures are expected to average near normal across the panhandle. And what does that mean? Well, we're getting some sort of southwesterly flow coming in off the bearing, off of the, off of the uh, North Pacific, and guess what that means? Above normal precipitation. And because we're entering midwinter, still cold enough across the interior in these areas for the precipitation to remain all snow. So this could mean some additional notable snowfall coming up here as we head up uh, between next weekend and uh, through mid-month. So keep that in mind. Uh, be under the gun. It'll be interesting to see how the moisture transport uh, evolves with the different uh, low pressure systems and fronts that are going to be working their way up into the southwest mainland as we get past the first uh, several days of January. So once again, Happy New Year to everyone. Have a safe one and uh, enjoy it because we are heading definitely back into the light now.